welcome to the science class. You're a part of chapter number 7, Experiments with Water. We are going to watch the part 1 video of this chapter. Dear children, take out your NCERT book on page number 60 and let's find out what floats and what sinks. Aisha was waiting for dinner. Today, her ummi, her mom, was making her favorite food, puris and spicy potatoes. Aisha was very excited. She saw that her mother rolled the puris very nicely. And now she was waiting what her mom is going to do. Aisha saw that when her mother put the puris into the oil, first the puris sank and then the puris bloated and the puris started floating on top of the oil. She was very surprised why the puris sank and then started floating again. Then Aisha's mother explained that puris float in the oil because the hot oil makes the puris rise up and gets filled up with air. The air is lighter than the oil so the puris float. Today I have invited a genie to explain us about the floating and sinking of objects. I'm sure you all must be excited. So let's watch carefully to understand the concept of floating and sinking of, of objects. Today we will learn about floating and sinking. wondered why some things float and some things sink? Let's learn about floating and sinking today. Hmm, what causes some things to float and some to sink? Well, it's all about something we call density. Ah, don't worry, let me explain this. Everything around us is made up of small molecules. And some objects, tiny little objects called molecules, are tightly packed together. And in others, they are loosely packed together. This is actually what density means. The objects that are tightly packed together have a higher density, and the more loosely packed objects aren't that dense. Whatever objects sink are more dense. See the stone? Marbles. And yes, these coins, they all sink in water because the molecules are jam-packed in these. Similarly, whatever objects float are less dense, like this rubber ball, this plastic bottle, um, and this lovely balloon. They all float in water because the molecules are loosely packed in these. Ah, some boats and ships are large and would seem very dense, but they still float. To understand this, let me explain the Archimedes Principle. It states that any object immersed in a fluid is acted upon by an upward or buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. The ship has a long and wide base because of which the amount and weight of water displaced by it increases. So, as the weight of displaced water increases, the buoyant force exerted by the water also increases, and the ship floats on water. So, if the buoyant force is equal to the object's weight, then the object will float. If the buoyant force is less than the object's weight, then the object will sink. But you must have heard in the news about some ships that sink in water. When the weight of the ship is more than the maximum possible upthrust, then it sinks to the bottom. Can you show some objects that sink and some objects that float? 
Yay! Some seeking objects are coins, iron nails, glass, stone and marble, and other things. Some floating objects are bottles, paper clips, cork, plastic balls, and balloons. With this, we come to an end of this segment. Keep watching this video again and again till we meet next. Have a good day. Have a happy online schooling.